everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and in this video, we are gonna be making over this Pennsylvania house four piece set. If you ask me, this is a super cool story on how I got this set for as cheap as I got it. I was scrolling on Facebook Marketplace and I came across some pretty dingy photos and I was like, hmm, what's this? And it was this whole set plus the bed and the headboard and there were mirrors that went with it, the whole nine yards. And it was listed at only $200. So I was like, of course, I clicked right away did some more research about the pieces and I knew that this was a top-notch quality set. I did not know that it was Pennsylvania House until I actually arrived there, but when I was messaging the lady, she was like, yeah, no problem, you can come and pick it up you know, later this week. And I, was, I gave her a $100 deposit so she would hold it for me. And come to find out, it was at an estate sale and the last day of the sale, she had done a half off of her estate sale. So she only charged me $100 for these four pieces. And you guys, when I tell you that the buy-in upfront cost really does kind of set the pavement or set the way for how much profit you can potentially earn for sets, large sets like this, I am not kidding. So only $100 dollars enough of me talking we are going to remove some hardware so i am going to keep the hardware on these the bail poles which is what this style is called they're actually kind of coming back into style and i think that it's not only going to save me money because there's tons of hardware but also i like the look of them with this design of furniture we're gonna of course change what the actual look is but we're gonna keep the hardware. I may change the color, but for now, I am just gonna go ahead and remove it and put it in a container to save for later. I decided that on this piece, or this set, I mean, I am going to keep track of the time that it takes me to make over this set, just so that we can have all of the true, true numbers. So just removing the hardware took me 15 minutes. And I will continue to update this after every single step so that you guys can kind of gauge how long a project this size may take. Next up, we are going to clean. Okay, next step after removing the hardware is cleaning. I'm going to do a time check so that I know exactly how long it's going to take me to clean. We're going to get these guys down off of here so that we can get them cleaned a little bit easier here. They are so dusty. I think I'm gonna take a vacuum to them first and then we'll move on to the actual cleaning. All right, now that I got all the vacuuming done, we are ready to actually clean these pieces down. I am going to be using the Lily Moon Paints Furniture Prep Cleaner. A lot of you guys ask about this. It does not require a rinse and it will be linked down below in the description. I just spray it on and let it kind of do its thing for a minute and then wipe it all off. It gets the dust and grease and grime off of the surface and really preps it to be sanded. Uh, I'm also going to be taking out the drawers and I don't know what we're going to find inside. I'll probably have to do some more vacuuming, but we'll just kind of go from there.
it's time to update our time tracker. So cleaning everything from top to bottom, including the vacuuming and all of that jazz took me 50 minutes. So we're already in over an hour, but the prep work is almost complete. Next up, we're gonna sand. Okay, time to sand these babies. So we're gonna do a little bit of sanding the finish off as well as scuff sanding. I'm gonna start with the tops. The tops are in like really good condition, but I want them to be in perfect condition. So I'm going to sand the tops off. There's just a few, few, few scratches, but since I want to stain these, I could have left them as is potentially, but there's just a few areas where they're not quite perfection. So I'm going to use an 80 grit sandpaper on my surf prep sander, get this finish off, and then we'll move on to the scuff sanding. I'm planning to do a stained top, so that's why I want to go ahead and sand it all off. So now that my tops are completely sanded of the finish, I did that with an 80 grit. Now we're gonna go ahead and move up in grits to get a little bit of a finer sandpaper. So I'm gonna move to a 120. And this is going to help me go ahead and start closing up any pores that the wood has, but then also sand out any sanding swirls. When you work with like a 60 and 80 grit, even a 120, you can get sanding swirls in your wood. And then when you stain it, it's going to pop out and you're really gonna be able to see it. So we're gonna work our way up from 80 to a 120, probably up to a 220 before we stain. That way we have a nice, surface with no sanding swirls. Okay, so this is already such a more smooth surface now that I just went over it with a 120. I don't think there's any sanding swirls, but before staining, I always like to go up to about a 220 grit. That way I know for sure that there's no swirls. And probably before I'm 100% finished sanding the tops, I'll take a water mister and just mist everything because when it darkens up is when you can really see those sanding swirls. So that'll just really allow me to make sure 100% that there are none left before I stain because it's the pits when you have to go back and basically re-sand everything if you've done the stain and then you see sanding swirls. We don't want that, so you'd have to redo everything. And I wanna avoid that, so we gotta take the steps to do it up front before we need to uh, move on to the stain. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this nightstand over and do the same thing. All right, the tops are done. They're looking gorgeous. 
I am moving on now to some scuff sanding. I'm gonna start over here on the drawers. So the difference between scuff sanding and regular sanding is I went all the way down and removed the color and the finish on the tops. But for these, I'm just gonna go over it with a 180 grit and kind of roughen up the surface a little bit so that the primer can adhere really nicely. This is like a pretty glossy surface. So we wanna give it some tooth so that it can really grab onto it. And then we'll also just kind of be sanding out any imperfections that may be in the wood currently, like any some superficial scratches and things like that. But we're not gonna be getting rid of the color. There might be some areas that will kind of take off the finish a little bit, but mostly it's just going to give it a rougher surface. All right, here is the update. We got scuff sanding all done and I've been kind of keeping track over the past day or two that I've been sanding both the tops and the scuff sanding portions. So I've just kind of been jotting down times that it's taken me. So it looks like we're at about two and a half hours in total for sanding, which is right at about like what I would have estimated this to take because I had to go from the finished wood all the way to the raw wood on four areas and I did it with three different types of sandpaper. So that's going to take a while, especially the first layer. And then of course, scuff sanding always just takes a little bit of time because there's so many nooks and crannies that you need to make sure to get into so that the primer will adhere everywhere and not just on like the main surfaces, but even in all of the little crevices. So we're still keeping track here. Next step is going to be just double checking to make sure that there's no repairs that need to be made. If there are, I'm gonna be using some Bondo and wood filler, and then we'll move on to the next step. So there's not really any repairs, but I am gonna do a little bit of hole filling. I had, they, there were those uh, keyhole, I know there's a specific name, I just can't think of it right now, um, but there's, the keyhole, they were fake, and I just don't wanna put them back on. I am gonna still use the original hardware, but probably change it to a different color, but those just, to me, they dated the piece a little bit, so I am going to just fill in those holes, and if I want to put them back on later, I can always do that by just pounding in the nail holes again. For now, I'm just going to cover them up. So we've got the Bondo and the, the cream hardener here. I don't need a lot because there's only gonna be the eight little tiny holes that I need to fill. And then once this hardens up, I'll be able to sand it all back. Okay, now there is some areas of these pieces that I want to cut off. So we're gonna work on that next. So for the bottoms of these pieces, a lot of them, or all four of them have little wooden decor pieces that are just supposed to be decorative and to me it just super dates these pieces a lot so i am going to be modifying them a little bit just to bring them back into like the modern day the nightstands do have like solid sides and i'm not going to touch that um, but this part right here where it kind of dips down i don't know what they were thinking but to me this is just not a great design choice i'm gonna cut this off and just make it a curved uh curved 
full line, like kind of flatten it out at the top, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna take my jigsaw right here and go ahead and cut that off. I think I'm gonna grab some painter's tape just so that I have a line to go with. Other than that, it should be smooth sailing. The lines don't have to be perfect. We can always sand them smooth, but this will give me a gist of where I'm supposed to cut. Now I'm gonna take an 80 grit sandpaper and just flatten that out a little bit. There was not quite enough space here for me to get the dig saw as far up as I wanted to, so we're just gonna have to modify it a little bit with my sander. Okay, it's been a little while, but we figured some things out. So originally I wanted to just cut off, you know, the details like I told you. And then for some reason my jigsaw wasn't cooperating and it made the cut super, super curvy and uneven. So I was trying to take the sander to fix it, but that was gonna take ages because some of it was like an eighth of an inch that needed to be shaved off. Some of it was a quarter inch, some of it was nothing. So I was getting super frustrated. And then I had the idea to put a one by two over, there's already this detail here. So it really just kind of adds to that detail and then it blocks off the area that I cut, which really doesn't make a difference because you won't be able to see it. And then I curved the bottom edges of the feet here or the legs to kind of make them a little bit less square and a little bit less bulky and also to kind of match the nightstand's bottoms a little bit better. So now that I've got all that done, it took quite a while uh, I'm still gonna include all the time that it took me because that's just part of a furniture flip and sometimes there's design flaws when you get to a certain point and then you have to pivot and you have to change up and be flexible about what you're doing on your project. But here we are on the other side and I think this is going to, it's not exactly what I had envisioned, but I think that it's going to work. So I'm gonna glue and nail this piece to both the tall dresser and the long dresser. The nightstands are all good, so we didn't need to do it on those. And then we'll let these dry while we kind of prep for primer and then we'll prep for primer. So I like to use wood glue and nails because the wood glue is going to hold it on there forever. And then the nails just help the wood glue stay help it kind of cure up and dry um, so that's why i like to use both and then we'll just take a little bit of wood filler and fill in these nail holes so that you'll never even know they were there
I've been prepping for like two hours. So we're gonna add that to the list of time. Uh, I wrapped all the drawers in plastic and then I had to wrap the tops of the pieces in plastic as well since I don't wanna paint those. And I also wiped back all of the sanding dust. So two hours added on to the timeline, but we are finally ready to prime. It's time to prime. So the paint I'm using technically has primer built in, but it's more of a bonding primer. And so I'm gonna take the extra step and put on a stain blocking primer that also has bonding properties as well. It's called Bonding Boss. It's actually uh, Dixie Bell's newer formula that kind of combined their slick stick and their boss. So it's got the bonding and the stain blocking all in one solution here. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it and I'm gonna strain it into my sprayer so that we can get any chunks out of there that is possibly in there. I'm using gray and that's just cause this is gonna be really close to the color that I'm gonna go. I didn't wanna use white because sometimes that has harder time covering really well and you have like to do multiple coats. So this gray should give us a nice coat or two of the first layers and then the actual paint will go on super smooth. Once this strains in, we'll be able to spray everything. Done. So once that's dry, I'm gonna evaluate, see if we need a coat too, otherwise we'll be moving on to paint. It is time for primer round two. This dried really nicely, but there are some areas that I feel like I can see just a few wood tannins popping through. And generally, if there is exposed wood, this will happen on the first layer of primer. And then that second layer will just really lock it all in and then uh, it'll give us full coverage as well. But I did do the scratch test, no primers coming off anywhere, which means that we did an awesome job cleaning and sanding. It's always important to test your primer uh, on the first or second coat because you don't want to continue on to the painting if your primer is not even adhering to the surface well. And all you do is just kind of take your nails um, and like really scratch at it. It kind of gives you the ick, but you really scratch at it, make sure that it's not coming off at all and then you're good to go with primer. Uh, this dried down like really smoothly, so I'm not gonna do the sanding in between coats yet. I'll do that probably after the second coat of primer to smooth everything out for the paint, so all of that is really nice and smooth. Let's do it. It's time to paint. I'm so excited. It's 
It's been a long time coming, let's just say. Prep is done, so painting is here. I'm gonna use the Dixie Belle Silk Paint. It's all in one. It has the primer, paint, and top coat built in. I already did the primer, explained that to you guys on why I did that. The color I'm gonna be using is Glacier. So it's this warm white. It, it has, it's more of like a beige color, I would say. It's really pretty, it's neutral. I haven't done a neutral set in a little while and I like to kind of switch up the colors that I choose both for your guys' sake, but then also for my inventory here at the shop. So I'm gonna strain this in and then I always like to use the Floetrol, which is a substance that helps keep your paint wetter longer, and it, so then it helps with uh, self-leveling. Now, the silk paint has self-leveling properties in it already, but this just kind of gives it even more of a time to level out since these surfaces are so large. So I'm gonna pour this whole, this whole jar of paint into here and then mix it in with some Floetrol. And then I'm also gonna put just a small amount of water to thin it out the slightest bit to get a better spray pattern. Using silk paint quite a lot, I just kinda know about how much water needs to be added for a really good spray pattern. It's like maybe an ounce or two of water for the full amount of paint that I just put in. That'll be plenty. And then of course, we'll wanna make sure that everything is stirred up really, really well so that it's all one consistent product. All right, time to spray. here but first coat is on that's gonna dry for a while because of that stuff that I put in it to make it dry make it wetter and longer and to even all out but we'll be back for coat number two here soon hey time to set up for coat two
it's time to update our marker board with the time of how long it took me to paint everything. Um, it's actually a lot less than primer because I found a different way to do the drawers. Sometimes when you have drawers and you're doing them individually, it can take a while to move them. So I put them in a line on the table and that really helped speed things up. So we are in f about 40 minutes when it came to painting. And the next step is I am going to be unwrapping everything, kind of starting to reassemble, but then also we are gonna be staining the tops of these drawers, or of these dressers, and I am gonna show you exactly how to do that next. First things first, I'm gonna take the plastic off of the top of this guy. Now I am gonna stain the top here and I am gonna be using some stuff that I just had on hand. It's from Retika, it's a gel stain, but it's water-based. The color is barn wood and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it like normal. I generally like to just mist the top very lightly to help absorb it. Water kind of acts as like an oil-based pre-stain for oil-based stain. Like a pre-stain would be for oil-based stains, but this is water-based. So um, um, like a little slip coat, just kind of helping the wood take the stain evenly. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit on my surface here, and then I'll spread it around with one of these blue sponges with gel stain kind of better to have a little bit of excess so that it really can get on all of the surface evenly and then we'll wipe it back. So I'm thinking this is gonna be just a tad bit lighter than I'm wanting, but I'm gonna let it dry down and I'll probably come back and do a second coat. But in the meantime, I'll do the rest of the tops for coat one and then see what it's looking like. Now that the stain is all dry, I am going to go ahead and do a top coat on all four pieces. And I'm gonna be using the Reteak It Triple Teak. Um, that is just the top coat and it goes with the stain. So I just, whenever I can, I like to use the same products on top of each other, but it's not te technically necessary. You could really use any top coat with the stain, but just personal preference. So I'm gonna be using my Zebra Top Coat brush for this. This is going to help me just get a really streak-free finish on the top. And I'll probably do a couple coats. Okay, one of the last steps here, kind of on the home stretch of this big project, but I need to address the hardware. So I said that I was gonna be keeping the hardware at the beginning and I am still planning to do that. I am going to just change it up a little bit. So I'm gonna need to go ahead and clean it, but then I'm gonna just change the color. I thought about doing spray paint and that would be a lot quicker, but I found my bronze gilding wax and tried it out on a piece and it looks super good. The only thing I'm a little nervous about is it rubbing off. I think it should be okay once, we, once I clean these up and everything should be fine. Now with the gilding wax, most of the time it sticks to the hardware pretty well and it won't rub off later on but sometimes the hardware is a little bit too slick. And so what you do in that situation is either you can prime it with a bonding primer or you can also like scuff sand it just a little bit to give it a little bit of that roughness. So I may have to do that on these, but either way, I think that this is gonna look a lot nicer and last a lot longer than like a spray painted hardware would. So I'm just gonna get everything out here and organized. 
there's quite a bit of hardware on this set, so it's gonna take a little while, but I think it's gonna be much better than buying new for all of these. It'll save on some cost. And I always say the lowest buy-in possible is gonna make us have the best profit possible. 29 handles and four knobs. So quite a bit. All of the hardware has pretty much cured overnight, so I am ready to reassemble. All these things need are the hardware, and then we're finished up with this four-piece set. Everything is finished, but I've been slacking on updating the time, so I still have kept track, I just haven't updated you guys. So for the tops, staining and top coat, we're in at one hour for all of that. And then for redoing all of the hardware, both cleaning it and applying the gilding wax, that took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take, but it took an hour and a half. And then the last thing that I did was reassemble everything, and that took me about an hour to put all the drawers back in, take the plastic off of them, and then put, uh, put, the, new, put the updated hardware on. So here is our board and we're gonna add up all the time so that we can see exactly how much time this project took me to complete. 13 hours and 20 minutes, I think. Harrison, if it's not right, then correct me on our little cool board, which also, if you didn't notice, Harrison made this cool board on our screen, so shout outs to him down in the comments, our master editor. Um, but 13 hours for four pieces. Really not too bad, honestly, because I have had four piece sets in the past where I spent 30 hours on them, along with a lot more of an investment in the materials and the cost up front in general. So like I've been saying, I really wanted to show you guys how quick you can flip something larger like this. But if you think about it, if you have like one piece or two pieces, that may take you, uh, hopefully would take you a little bit less time. Um, but truly the buy-in at the beginning, the materials you use and the amount of time that you spend on a project is going to determine how much profit you get and how much time you spend on the project ultimately. So I've got some numbers for us. We had purchased the set for $100 and then we primed it with $40 of primer, $60 of paint, about $10 of stain, $5 in top coat, $5 for the gold gilding wax, and then about $20 for miscellaneous things like plastic, sandpaper, etc., etc. Uh, so we're all in at $240, which is a really, really low buy-in and investment for such a large, high quality set of furniture. I'm gonna be able to list this on Facebook Marketplace at a top tier value. I think I'm gonna go for about $2,750. So that's gonna give me around a $2,500 profit, which is insane 
for this because again, the buy-in was so, so low in the beginning. So let's do some more math and we're gonna do 2,500 divided by 13. So that is nearly $200 an hour. We are at $192 per hour if I sell it at the 2750, which I'm confident I will because this is a neutral color set that really helps uh, appease the masses, if you will, instead of painting it like red or purple or a color that isn't so desirable for a lot of people. I'm confident that this should fly off the shelves and it's a look that I haven't done like truly ever, I don't think. So I'm excited to see how the market takes it. So that way maybe I can recreate this look here in the near future. Thank you guys so much for watching. All the links are gonna be down below in the description for all of the products and tools that I used in this video. So be sure and check that out down below. I will be back next week for another furniture flip and we'll see you on the flip side.